I'm Bruce Rosenbaum from Modvik, and I'm here to talk about a uh, new uh, steampunk workshop called Steampunk Kinetics, Building Art into Science. And it uh, started actually working with uh, Ashley Hillier, a uh, psych professor at UMass Lowell, and we developed this nine-week steampunk workshop program for kids on the autism spectrum. And it was very successful. And I thought, well, you know, the, uh, these kids um, with autism did really well with this program and it was very successful. I think it also could work with neurotypical kids and uh, started to explore uh, potentially working with school systems and camps. And I had this exciting opportunity to actually work with Camp Ramah, New England, which is in the same town that we live in, uh, Palmer, Massachusetts. So uh, the, uh, and the unique feature of this was that uh, we had to go from a nine week program to basically uh, two and a half days uh, working with two uh, sets of um, kids, uh, 12 to 13 year olds and 14 to 15 year olds. And part of the magic of this was to create uh, steampunk kinetics, this kind of um, Rube Goldberg uh, rolling ball sculpture that includes uh, STEM and STEAM, science, tech, uh, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And then also having uh, a local vocational school, the Pathfinder School, having teachers and students from the school actually help with, um, uh, with the program and be there with the, with the, uh, the campers uh, as we were um, uh, putting the, the program together. So I think it was a win-win-win uh, in all uh, respects and we actually got at the end of the, the two and a half days a working rolling ball sculpture and it usually, when I usually do these programs, um, the first time around um, the ball doesn't kind of go all the way through. There's usually kind of snags or you know places where we, we need to adjust. With, the, with, with this project, um, they, they got it on the first uh, shot and uh, uh, there was tremendous excitement and, and passion. So um, this, this program really uh, has kind of given me uh, new purpose and new meaning uh, with my steampunk work. My name is Gavin Rivera. I'm from Pathfinder Tech. I'm in the electronics shop and that's where it all started. Bruce Rosenbaum proposed an idea. Actually, we, we've worked with him before with a couple of his other projects and uh, he proposed this idea this year of making a, a rolling ball sculpture that is focused around steampunk. I was like the idea man. I came up with the ideas. I, um, I came up with different styles of track we could do, how we could get the ball from point A to point B with no mistakes. And I think it went pretty well. It was, it was really interesting though. We had to make the copper tracks that the ball ran on. We had to make the, the bends that the ball would go through to be able to go from side to side. We, uh, we had to make everything all from scratch as well. Now, we had to make this prototype so that the students at Camp Ma would know what they're making or as an example. So naturally, we also had to make all the parts for them as well. We had to make, pretty sure it was 30 tracks, which each took about 10 to 15 minutes to make for one. A lot of soldering. 
all the groups seemed pretty focused and they all were really interested in the project, which was surprising. Um, which, which was even more surprising is they only had a few days to do it and they all got it done and it got it done very well. And I think what really led to that was the enthusiasm between all the, uh, all the campers. They all seemed very interested and very motivated. And it makes it a lot easier to help out when everybody's motivated. One of the small little kinks that we had is they didn't have any soldering experience. So uh, me and the other helpers, we had to, um, we taught a couple of the students how to solder, but it was mainly us soldering. They also didn't know how to use some of the machinery. So naturally we had to help. But other than that, it was all them. My favorite part was honestly the end when we got to see the, um, the, just the collaboration between all three groups and you know it's like lighting a Christmas tree and everything stacked up on each other and it's just a big ceremony you, you turn the LED strip on everything just looks so beautiful you know they have the backdrop of space they have the they have their big sculptures they put a tons of props in them and made it look beautiful and honestly my favorite part was just at the end seeing the ball roll through with everybody's combined effort it was definitely a great feeling to know that we helped these students make this amazing contraption. I think that it's definitely a program to keep in the future. Hi, my name is Ethan Griswold. I'm with Pathfinder Electronics and uh, one day um, I had seen the juniors working on this project off to the side in their own like junior half of the shop and then one day I'm just working minding my own business and uh, one of the teachers came over and uh, hey you're the one they said knew how to program right and yeah that's me I guess uh, all right do you know anything about Arduino we have a project and um, some kid can't make it for the actual like project the camp and it, uh yeah sure i can try and uh i was pulled over to the side and i got to meet bruce for the first time he explained to me what the um, steampunk kinetics project was the uh, rolling ball sculpture and he told me uh what his plan was for the whole thing he wanted to have um, a set of milk crates uh, with a ball that you could put through and it would have uh, lights and make sound when the ball hits certain parts it would trigger little switches so yeah that was that was easy enough I, I had no problem like grasping the concept of that so for the next few weeks I was um, in charge of the uh, programming and some minor building before I knew it camp rolled up on me we uh, brought the demo to the camp and set it up. Kids loved the demonstration and uh, we we told them that that's pretty much what theirs would end up being. It would just be like three of them stacked. By that time the kids had started on their designs and um, they had designated like the groups into three different people. You had your uh, builder, the guy who's in charge of all the construction, you know, concept guy who um, did a lot of the painting to design the whole thing, and then you had electronics, which was, you know, who I had to deal with. So uh, kids would come over, they'd say, hey, I need this, or I need help with this real quick. Uh, I so I helped them, uh, like, put the LEDs onto their projects, and uh, I I even pulled a few kids over and gave them a little programming lesson. I ended up giving four lessons, even though they were supposed to be three electronics kids. So, yeah, that's fun. And then they threw me for a loop. They wanted to add more LEDs, like in the back panel, so they would they would have like flashing lights on top of the like uh, fading uh, rainbowish lights. And uh, <laughs> I I got that set up, and they loved it, and they they were just having so much fun. I even let them learn how the programming worked. So. Yeah, they seem to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, my favorite part of the whole process was getting to like pass my programming knowledge onto these kids through these little lessons because like they were doing things and then I, I got to like experience my first programming lessons all over again. Just this time I was the one talking and it, it was fun to watch their faces light up as like when the lights lit up when they were supposed to and like they were they were having a really good time. I was surprised they were motivated and, like I, I, I just had a lot of fun with that.
I think the biggest thing about doing this project was um, the creativity. Um, too often in this day and age, uh, the students are pretty much saturated with um, technology, uh, especially cell phones, smartphones, all kinds of apps on their phones that can do like limitless things and social media. And unfortunately, the kids become consumers of uh, the technology and they're not really innovators. Um, and this was a great project where we could kind of get the creativity going in the students, uh, the kids, uh, where they, we kind of showed them a sample of the ones, um, the, the unit that my students built for their uh, junior project. And um, we gave them some sheets of paper and okay, you're gonna create your own. We'll start out on paper, uh, which any good engineering design always starts out with a, with a drawing. Uh, and then after that, we showed them all the parts and different uh, items, and um, and they actually, you know, created their own um, design. Uh, the theme of the project was uh, the Milky Way, since they were made out of uh, milk crates. Um, so there were some uh, uh, panels that we had that were uh, prefabricated, cut up, and painted black. And then the students had uh, paint supplies and brushes, uh, and they were uh, uh, tasked with uh, creating their own uh, design of like a Milky Way galaxy or planets or planets or spaceships or whatnot. And uh, they did, uh, some of the students did a really awesome job on, on that. And again, you know, the whole creativity and designing uh, is something I think that they're not really, um, you know, uh, doing as much of uh, nowadays. Uh, so I think that was like, uh, you know, one of the biggest uh, benefits and takeaways of, uh, of this project. Um, plus uh, the, the students at the camp were working closely with some of my electronic students. Uh, my electronic students were the ones that had actually fabricated all the, um, the track pieces and did uh, the Arduino programming and the wiring of the LED strips. And um, some of the camp students who wanted to learn a little bit more about that uh, would come and sit with my students um, and they would, uh, my students would teach them how to do Arduino programming and um, how to do uh, soldering. Some of the track pieces had to be cut to different sizes and sometimes uh, the solder connections would break and it'd have to be re-soldered. Uh, so my students were showing uh, the camp students how to do soldering, which I think uh, they, they really enjoyed. I think the, the really cool thing was that uh, part of Bruce's, you know, pedagogy, um, his pedagogical approach is that he took all of the, um, all of our campers to his kind of steampunk kinetic wonderland, um, so they could see really what, um, you know, what the what the kind of steampunk kinetic vision is at the end of the day. Um, you know, if on day one he said to the kids, "Okay, here are milk crates. This is kind of the final product. This is, you know, this is the thing we're going to do," they wouldn't understand kind of. Um, the, the field of steampunk kinetics, they wouldn't understand the whole reason why, you know, we're doing this and really answering the question, why? Um, and by taking them to the, you know, the steampunk kinetics wonderland on the first day, they got to see all of his creations and all the work of, you know, the, um, of his team and everyone else that has kind of put effort to those projects. Um, and then kind of during that time, they made the, um, you know, artistic vision of, you know, of the, um, the project that they were going to actualize in the following few days, and that's what really made it an exciting time. So Camp Vermont, New England is a uh, Jewish conservative overnight sleep labor camp located in western Massachusetts. Um, we have overnight programs for campers exiting second grade all the way to campers exiting 11th grade. We have a variety of different programs ranging from sports to arts to, you know, aquatics to Jewish learning and everything in between. Um, we, you know, have a beautiful facility um, with many, you know, um, high-level state-of-the-art programs. So we run this program at camp called Tishronia, um, which is essentially a made-up Hebrew word um, for kind of this week-long um, specialty program idea, where we bring in lots of different um, instructors and really, um, really professionals in their field, um, and it would be about a week long. Um, and kind of told them that within those confines to kind of create a artistic idea um, of something that he could do with the kids 
that would be both a workshop and teaching a skill. We we heard about Bruce living in the, the Palmer area and how the cool things that he was doing. And we heard about this, you know, really amazing program, an amazing, uh, you know, art that was happening through his studio in Palmer. Um, and given that, you know, literally right down the street from us, um, we thought to ourselves, you know, wow, this is a great opportunity to do something. You know, we started talking with Bruce and trying to figure out possible things that we could do. Um, and then we kind of we came up with this, um, the steampunk kinetic workshop that we were able to run this past summer. Bruce really was the one with the artistic vision, the one who thought, okay, let's, you know, let's get these old milk crates, put them together, um, and really create that. Um, but it was, you know, it was, it was really him who, I guess, at the end of the day had that, that true vision. So our campers, really, really enjoyed this program. Um, it's something, you know, nothing like we've, we've usually ever had at camp before. Um, we sometimes, you know, bring in robotics specialists or things like that, but this was something much beyond that. Uh, the campers really got to, you know, use science, technology, engineering, art, math, everything to put together this real creation. But also, what's really cool about the Steampunk Kinetics Workshop was the kids really got to um, in my opinion, at least, really got to think about how we can, we can use objects, things that may be considered, you know, trash or um, artifacts or something that doesn't have a kind of a modern um, life to it and make them anew and give them an alternative, um, you know, use. We were able to kind of bring in this, you know, Palmer business being the Steampunk Kinetic Workshop that Bruce runs and the, you know, local Palmer school. Um, this was, in, in my remembrance, the second time that we've done things with um, with Pathfinder. Um, actually, early, earlier this year in May, um, we had the Pathfinder kids that work in the um, the horticulture um, program come to camp and help um, build our garden. Um, and now, you know, we're also excited to have the Pathfinder students with us um, for the Steampunk Kinetics Workshop. And, you know, even more so, more so excited to see other opportunities for us to... Um, you know, increase our collaboration and relationship. Anyone who's interested in learning more about Camp Rama in New England should go to our website, Camp Rama, N-E, uh, at .org, um, or find us uh, on any forms of social media. And we're always excited to talk to uh, parents and, uh, you know, kids and families about exciting opportunities at Camp Rama. Mm-hmm.